Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you a game-changing development which has recently come into play with Google coming into the realm of AI image editing via the Gemini 2 image editor. And for this example, we're going to be taking one of the scenarios which used to be very, very challenging, which is product placement, where you have the photograph of a particular product like the shoe that you can see in front of you, and you want to put this on an AI model. Even with all the other advanced AI tools, this was something that was very challenging up till now. But with Gemini 2, you're going to see that even this can be solved with writing a few prompts. So this is going to be very, very exciting. The links to all the tools that you're going to be seeing in this tutorial, as well as the images that we are going to be using, you can download that by using the link in the description of the video. Now let's get started. Everything will start from Google AI Studio because that is where you will be able to access under model the Gemini 2 flash image generation and this is kind of on the experimental or the testing stage. This is completely free and at some point when you're in the studio, it will ask you to just sign in, that's all. And then you will see this interface. Once you have selected the correct model here, under output, output format, make sure this is set to images and text. And then you're all set. We are then going to go to this tab that says image editing. And it's going to give you like an example straight away. Like right now you can see this image. And then you can basically type in prompts like it has given us in this example, like add some chocolate drizzle to these and the resulting image will just have that edit. So this is similar to something like in painting with the generative fill feature in Photoshop and the other in painting software that are out there in this whole AI craziness these days. But this somehow just seems much more convenient. But where the real power lies is in its ability to create composites. And that's what we're going to explore here right now. So what we're going to do is we're not really going to experiment too much with the settings here. There's just one setting here which says temperature. If I just hover over this, you can see that it says creatively, uh, creativity allowed in the responses. So we're going to just play around with this, but you'll understand what this means later on. Right now, what we're going to do is we have a couple of images of three different shoes here. And let's start with the shoe here, number one. And we are basically, first of all, going to upload this here. And right now, once the shoe gets uploaded, you automatically get this area to write the prompt. This is where we can, we're going to generate that AI model who's going to wear these shoes. Now, since we're doing this experiment at three different settings for temperature, we're going to see how much difference this makes, how much of its own creativity really changes the final outcome. We're going to start off with zero. That means we are basically not allowing any creativity from Gemini AI. It's going to really follow the prompt and which is going to be generate an image of a, let's say a female model wearing these shoes. And with the earlier software, the problem was you could do something like this, but then the shoe would not be the same. That was the problem. That's why you could not really create such a composite, but just see with Gemini 2. So let's wait for the result here. So you can see we've got the image. Now it's not a full body image. So that's where I'm just going to talk about how you can even vary uh, the pictures that you get by changing the prompt a bit. But right now, let's just focus on this very fact that it has got exactly this shoe right here. That itself is amazing. There's no software I've seen till now which can do this by simply writing a prompt because all the other software that claim to do this do change a lot of things in the shoe. Like, for example, if you notice the logo here, that also is exactly the same as this. And the, now the best part is I can actually even modify it more. So I can say close up of the shoes. Or I can just even just type in close up. Okay. And if I just run this, now this is one issue that sometimes happens with uh, this particular thing. So I've just written close up and it has actually gone back to that initial sample uh, photograph. So one thing I forgot to mention was when you start this process, okay, just always hit this button first, which says clear chat. Because what I've seen is if there are multiple images of different products out there, sometimes it can get a bit confused and sometimes it even gives you like the composite between those images. So always hit this button first, which clears out everything. And then we do the same thing again. So just to save time, let me get to the next step. All right, so this time we've got a slightly different result, but I think this even looks much more real and much better. So if you just open up this image, you can see this can be easily used in something like e-commerce because there are a lot of shots that you get like this because it just looks so close to the original. 
And now I can, let's say, modify this. So maybe I can say now, if I say close up, I think this time hopefully should be able to give us a result and understand that we are asking for a close up of these shots, but with the person still there like this. So you can see, right, this also is amazing. So it immediately gives you like a second variation. And this is absolutely mind blowing. Now let's try something zoomed out. So maybe we can uh, say, just copy this first prompt and paste it here, but we can say, uh, in an image of um, full body portrait of a female model wearing these shoes. So let's see this time even if we can get the face. Now here's the thing, even if it doesn't give you the face, that's not a brick problem at all. Because if you, even if you get an image like this, earlier on the problem used to be the opposite, that you could generate everything well, but the shoes were not the same. And that's a bigger problem to have because if even if you get something like this, like I'm gonna be showing you later on, this can easily be corrected in any other AI image generator because you can use any generator out there which outpaints or extends this image and you will get that person. And it doesn't matter what kind of a person you get, but the main thing is the tough part was this which has been solved for us, which is the person is wearing those shoes, okay? So if you go down here, again, you can see it's not exactly following full body portrait. What I've seen is it just takes a couple of generations to get results. And for example, I can show you something like this. After a couple of generations, I got this. And later on, we're also gonna be seeing uh, that yes, the image quality is not that great, but like I said, that is not a big problem. This is the big problem. I'm gonna show you how you can use a free AI image generator to sort out the rest of the problem here, make it look like a much more better looking and a realistic uh, model. So we'll handle that later. Right now, what we're gonna do is, we got some decent results with temperature zero. Let's try uh, some results at one. Now remember, we don't want to mix. We're going to try a neck shoe. So always remember to just clear the chat here. And let's upload the neck shoe here. And I'm going to use the same prompt just to start things off. Let's see the results. All right, this time we've got these results. So you can see that, yes, it still maintains that nice uh, design here. And looks very, very close to this. Even if you notice something like the sole. I mean, this is incredible. Even the inner parts here, that it's pink. And here also is pink. This is very similar. It's exactly the same shoe. That is absolutely incredible. We've not seen anything like this before in the AI editing world. All right, now I'm just again trying the full body portrait prompt. So let's see the results. And you can see this time we've got a much better looking image, which is indeed full body, but let's just see if the shoes look like that. Yeah, you can see again, the shoes look pretty good. We've got a full body portrait of a female. Uh, this time, because the logo is here, uh, so this time we can't see the logo here, but you can still see it's exactly the same shoe, so which is amazing. Now we're going to try temperature two, and from whatever experiments I did, even though it might suggest that they, we are increasing the creativity, giving more liberty to this tool, I actually, in my opinion, or till now, whatever experiments I've done, this actually gave me the best results. So let's also try this. We're going to clear everything, and now we're going to use that third shoe image. All right, so this shoe is ready and you can see that it has a very specific logo here. So let's see if we can do a good job. So we're gonna run this. I'm using the same first prompt here. So let's wait for the result. And you can see this looks really nice. This time it's directly following the prompt here. We didn't have to modify the prompt, like I said. At two, I've got really good results. So if we check this out, yes, the face is not there, not a big deal. Any outpainting tool can get us a face. That's not a problem. But again, if you look at uh, this particular image, let me just actually download this so we can get a better close up look. Again, you can see the image quality of the model itself is not great. That's not a problem, but just look at this shoe. This is exactly the same shoe, the color, the logo. This is fantastic for people who are into product photography, e-commerce and all these things, right? So you can see we've got a couple of results here. Now let's move on to the next part where I'm gonna show you how you can actually improve a result like this and make it look much better. All right, so to improve the results, we're gonna be using a completely free AI image generator, which is Focus AI, which works with stable diffusion. If you don't know how to set this up on your computer, it takes less than 60 seconds and a few clicks. You can watch the setup video the link to which is given in the description, it's completely free. So once you are seeing this interface, we're gonna go over to input image and we're gonna use that example image that I had shown to you earlier. So we are going to go to in paint or the out paint tab and then upload that image here. And you can see that right now, this doesn't look good at all. But like I said, we've got the harder part done, which was the placement of the shoes on the model. Now what we can do is we get this nice uh, 
brush to in-paint it. You can see some shortcuts here. So we're basically going to hit the shortcut, which is Control Command plus moving our wheel to adjust the brush size, make it slightly bigger. And we are basically going to draw the mask all over her. So make sure that you cover her entirely because we just want to keep the shoes unaffected by the in-painting that we're going to perform right now, but the rest of the things have to change. All right, so we are all set. We're going to go down under method by default in paint or out paint will be selected. So we can leave it at that because we do want some aggressive changes. If you're only looking to improve some details and you're already happy with the shot, you can always choose improve detail. But since this model didn't really look good, we don't mind if focus AI changes it completely because shoes are not going to get affected anyway. And now what we're going to do is we are going to hit the advanced tab. Make sure we get the best quality image in the generation. So we're going to set performance to quality. We can try two images, two different variations to see which one looks better. Under output format, we can select JPEG. Now also, when you are using the in-paint or out-paint method, it's always a good idea to give a prompt for context. So what we can do here is we can go over to chat GPT. And once you're there, you can upload this original image there and just type in something like prompt to generate this image. And it's going to just quickly give you out a nice looking prompt. Let's copy this. Let's go back to focus and let's paste this prompt. And we are all set. We're going to now hit generate and wait for the results here. All right, so we've got both our results. Let's just see. This is the first one. And this is the second one. I think the first one definitely looks better. Now, most of these image generators will cause a bit of distortion on the face. That's why focus is great for this because uh, we can just take this image the one that has been generated, just remove this one from the in-paint, the original one. Now we can drag this generated image and just paint over her face. And then we can go on to the method again, but this time we are going for a subtle change just to improve the detail. So we're gonna to go to improve detail and in the in-paint additional prompt, we can just type in detailed female, uh, female face. And then we can just again hit generate and let's wait for the results. All right, so you can see that it's finished its job and you can see this new face looks good. Let's see how it looks in the full image. So we can see that this also looks amazing. Another problem can be the fingers sometimes. I've got a separate video on how to correct fingers in these AI models. The link is hovering on top. I will leave the link to that video in the description also. That will teach you how to correct this in a very easy way using focus and some other free tools. Now talking about free ways to improve the images before I end this video, what if you get one of those images where let's say the head was kind of cut off or the body was cut off, how, how can you quickly at least get to this point so that you can do the rest of the things in focus? Well, for that kind of an out painting, you can just go to firefly.adobe.com. The link will be given in the description. And then once you are on the homepage, just go to the image tab here and then go to generate a fill, upload that image. For example, remember this was one of the nice images that we had got, but the face was cut out. Well, then you can just go on to expand and just pull it as much outwards as you need and then just hit generate and let's see the results. And you can see that then you're gonna get the rest of the body parts also. And then you can exactly follow the same procedure with this image inside focus to improve its quality. And when I did that, this was the final result. And you can see this also looks good. But the main thing here is, the tough part was done by Gemini 2. So when we talk about all these different upcoming AI tools, we often exaggerate and say that this can have a big impact on photography, but I really think what Gemini 2 is capable of doing can definitely have a huge impact on photography because for the first time we are able to create a composite between two different images in a very realistic way, which even with the all the other AI tools still now was a very, very difficult thing to achieve. So this is something to look out for. Right now the image quality is not good, so it needs further refinement, but when the images start to improve and with the amount of resources Google is putting into Gemini, I think it's definitely going to improve. So this is something to watch out. But in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow along all my different experiments with the AI image editing tools out there, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.